Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials in MATLAB. In this tutorial we explain how to check the stability of state space models in MATLAB. However, before we start we need to mention the following. It is not completely correct to say the stability of state space models. Well, this is because the concept of the stability of state space models is actually not defined. What is defined is the concept of the stability of the equilibrium points of state space models. Consequently, the correct statement is to check the stability of equilibrium points of state space models. To illustrate this, consider a pendulum example. We have a bar that can revolve around this point and to one end of the bar we have a ball. Obviously, this system has two equilibrium points. This is the first equilibrium point over here and the second equilibrium point is illustrated over here. What's the difference between this equilibrium point and this equilibrium point? Well, this equilibrium point is stable, however, this equilibrium point is not stable. Consequently, we cannot say that the pendulum system is stable or unstable, right? Because at the same time, depending on where the ball is positioned, it can be stable or it can be unstable. We can only say that its particular equilibrium point is stable or unstable. However, for the brevity of this tutorial, we will ignore this fact and we will incorrectly use the phrase stability of state space models in order to make this video as short as possible and as clear as possible. However, always keep in mind this very important fact. Let us introduce a test example given by this ordinary differential equation. X with three dots where every dot corresponds to time derivative of x and x with three dots is the third derivative of x with respect to time plus 6x double dot where x double dot denotes the second derivative with respect to time plus 5x dot where x dot is a simple first derivative of x with respect to time plus 15x is equal to u. Over here, x is the dependent variable and u is the control signal. The first step is to introduce state space variables. We introduce the state space variables like this. x1 is equal to x. x1 is the first state space variable, then x2 is equal to x dot, x2 is the second state space variable, and x3 is equal to x double dot. Next. Let's differentiate these three equations. From the first equation, we obtain that x dot, x1 dot is actually equal to x dot. And from this equation, we have that x1 dot is actually equal to x2. Then we have that x2 dot is equal to x double dot and x double dot is equal to x3. Then, from this equation, we obtain that x3 dot is equal to x with 3 dots. And let's see what is x with 3 dots. Namely, from this equation, that is from our differential equation, we have that x with 3 dots is actually equal to minus 15x minus 5x dot minus 6x double dot plus u. Now, if we now, instead of x, x dot, and x double dot, write x1, x2, and x3, we actually obtain that x3 dot is equal to minus 15 x1 minus 5 x2 minus 6 x3 plus u. And this is our third state equation. This is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third state equation. Now that we have 
three state equations, we can group them and form our state space model. Over here, I will open a vector, and this is our state, the first derivative of the state vector. Actually, we have x1 dot, x2 dot, and x3 dot. Then, what do we have on the right-hand side? Okay, let's see. We will have a matrix multiplying a state vector plus we will have another matrix over here multiplying control input and let's fill the entries. Over here obviously we have x1, x2 and x3. Let's populate this matrix. From this equation, it follows that x1 dot is equal to x2. Consequently, we'll have 0, 1, 0 over here. How about the second equation? x2 dot is equal to x3. Consequently, over here, we will have 0, 0, 1. How about the third equation? x3 dot is equal to minus 15 x1. Here it is. Then we will have minus 5 over here. And over here we will have minus 6. Now, over here we will obviously have 0, 0, and 1. Since in the third equation we only have u, we will have 1 over here. Now, this is our A matrix. This is our B matrix. And I will denote this state vector simply as x, as x underline. And on the right hand side, on the left hand side, actually, we have x underline dot. Okay, this is our state equation. To form a state space model, we need an output equation. The output equation looks like this. Here we will assume that only x is measured. Consequently, our output equation is 1, 0, 0, multiplying the state vector x1, x2, x3 then over here we will have 0 multiplying u. Now this matrix is our C matrix and this matrix is D matrix. This is our state space model. The main question, is this state space model stable or not? Let's find out. Let's start with MATLAB state space model. First, what I always like to do is to clear the memory space. I can do that by calling the command clear. And after that, I like to call CLC to clear the command window history. The next step is to define the system matrices. Let's first define the system matrix A. The first row is 0, 1, 0. The second row, let's just end the row before we open a new row. The second row is 0, 0, 1. The third row is minus 15, minus 5, minus 6. Okay, next let's define the B matrix. Here's the B matrix. B matrix is actually a vector. 0 is the first row, 0 is the second row, and the third row is 1. Let's define a C matrix. It's simply a row vector, 1, 0, 0. And let's define the D matrix. The D matrix is simply 0. To create a state space model, we will simply type System1 will be name of the state space model and we call the MATLAB function SS which is short for state space and we specify the system matrices as input arguments A, B, C and D and that's it simple as that let's evaluate this to check our state space model here it is here's our state space model matrix A, matrix B, matrix C, matrix D, and that's it. In this tutorial, we will explain several approaches for testing the stability of this state space model. Here's the first approach. The first approach is relatively straightforward, however, it's not very informative. 
Namely, we can use the MATLAB's function is stable. And as the input argument, we just provide system1. Okay, so let's see the output. The output is 1. And the output is actually a binary number. 1 means that the system is stable, and 0 means that the system is not stable. Here, since we got 1, the system is stable. However, this function doesn't tell us anything qualitatively about the stability of such a system. How far is this system from being unstable, for example? Or can you quantify somehow the response of such a system? Will we have oscillations? Or will we have just asymptotic convergence to zero? Okay, to obtain more information about the stability of the system, we actually need to compute the poles. The poles are actually defined for transfer functions. However, we can also compute the pole of a state space model. What will happen inside? MATLAB will compute the transfer function and then it will compute the poles. Okay, so let's try to do that. The function for computing poles is pole, and we just specify our system. And the output will be a vector containing poles. I will call this vector pole vector. Okay, so let's see the output. And here it is. Aha, uh -huh, now we can see the poles of our transfer function, and they are all in the strictly negative part of the complex plane we can see that the real parts are negative. This means that the state space model is actually asymptotically stable. We can see that this pole is on the real axis and we have two complex conjugate poles that are not strictly lying on the real axis. This means that we will most likely have oscillations in our response. Another thing that you can also compute about the system are zeros. So let's see the zeros of a system. To compute the zeros, we can simply call the function zero. Over here, we will not have a zero, and you will see this by evaluating this line. That is, there is no zero in the system. The next approach for checking the stability of the system is actually to compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A. The eigenvalues of the matrix A actually determine the stability properties of the corresponding, corresponding equilibrium point. To compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A, I will define the output as eigenvalues, and I will use MATLAB's function AIG, and we will specify our matrix A. Now, let's see the output over here. Aha, uh -huh, here is the output. Interesting. Let us compare this output with our pole vector. And you can see that the eigenvalues of the matrix A are actually the poles of our system. Interesting. So that was another approach for checking the stability. To summarize, you can simply compute the eigenvalues of the matrix A and the eigenvalues of the matrix A are actually the poles of your system. If the eigenvalues are strictly in the left half of the complex plane, this means that your system is asymptotically stable. Let's explain another approach for checking the stability of our state space model. The third approach is actually a graphical approach. Mm -hmm, interesting. We can simply compute an impulse response of our system. And if in the impulse response converges to zero, this means that our system is actually asymptotically stable. Let's do that. First of all, let's define a new figure. And to compute the impulse response, we will simply use the function impulse. And we will specify our state space model. So let's evaluate this. And here is our impulse response. OK, we can see that the impulse response after some transient period converges to zero. This means that the system is asymptotically stable. Good. 